Hello everyone and welcome back to today's long and chatty perfume tag video that is called Show Me Your Spritz and it was started by the Moody Boo reviews and I was personally tagged by the lovely Rose and Jones so thanks for tagging me and of course I will also tag a few reviewers in the end. With that being said you guys, Show Me Your Spritz perfume tag consists out of nine different categories that are all called so cool and and uh, I will explain you each of them as we come to it, but I wanted to tell you that if you know a perfume that fits a certain category, please share it with all of us, because I would be really interested in your take on this tag that was quite a challenge for me, but I'm very glad that I'm doing it, because thanks to it I'm able to tell you interesting stories behind some perfumes from my collection, and uh, before we dive right into it, I wanted to remind you to follow me on my social media such as Instagram and Facebook and of course please check out my Patreon page for extra perfume content. And with that being said, let me show you my spritz. So you guys, the first category is called Unicorns are real and basically this is the perfume I had to chase the longest to acquire and uh, I have three perfumes to show you so the first one is from my most favorite American indie perfume house and those of you who have been following me for a while all know that that is DSH perfumes that is run by Don Spencer Hurwitz that is my favorite perfumer I just have that connection with her everything she does is magic to me and uh, first time I met her I had no idea who she was and that was actually at Art Mill Faction Awards after party that I attended thanks to SP Perfumes oh wait did you notice something I actually reorganized my perfume collection and now SP Perfumes is over there and actually me and Sven we won Art Mill Faction Awards that I attended in 2017 because Sven was nominated for another of his fragrance that didn't won then but then last year we won blah 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 whatever we went to the after party and Dawn was there because she was also nominated and I remember we all sat in the lobby of some hotel because bar was super full and it was me, Victor Wong, Sven, Shaylee Wellington if I'm not wrong and Don Spencer Hurwitz who was sitting right on the floor because there was literally no space for us and we were chatting having best time of our lives and um, as we said bye to each other she gave me two tiny vials of her perfumes and she told me one of them is really crazy and I was super excited for it and that was rendezvous that I tried in my hotel room and you know my world was would upside down because back then I had no experience with animalic perfumes and this is like the best animalic fragrance ever that is quite expensive because it is created out of really high quality materials and it smells like passionate love of two lovers who are having affair with each other. It's super cool, not too skanky and I just love 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 it and I have been wanting to get it since 2017 and last year I finally force myself to get it. It was quite expensive but totally worth it. So another unicorn fragrance of mine is Vanille Fatale from Tom Ford. It came out in 2017 if I'm not wrong and I just fell in love with it right at first sniff but um, I have never invested in a full bottle because it seemed to be so expensive for me and I'm not the biggest fan of Tom Ford so I just like always passed on it until 2020 this year when I created a perfume wish list that I decided to stick to I'm so glad that I finally got my most anticipated vanilla fragrance that is one of the best vanillas out there because it is not too sugary, it's not sweet, it's not plain vanilla, it has so much to it. I have a detailed written review on it on my Patreon page, please check it out, but I need to tell you that I don't regret that investment because this is literally vanilla of my dream. And the final one I wanted to include in this category is actually a limited edition from Jo Malone that is called Nashi Blossom. And when I first tried it, I really enjoyed it, 
but back then I was just I, I was in high school I had no money for it I tried on the back of my hand um, like on my wrist and all day long I, I couldn't stop smelling it and you know it reminded me of Kinzo perfume that I used to wear when I lived in Ukraine in school when I got into rock music and that was best time of my life sixth grade oh my god love that time and uh, the perfume is discontinued now I don't remember the name of it I had it in a pan um, bottle and uh, I decided to invest in this perfume it was sold out in Frankfurt's um, Douglas store so I needed to drive to another John Malone's counter and finally chase it and got it Guys, do you know what would be the best soundtrack for this tag? Spritz me, spray me Put your stuff all over me so that was the story about my unicorn fragrances and the next one is House of the Rising Scent which is basically the new perfume house I've just discovered and I'm loving and you know what I'm the person that constantly discovers super unknown brands and I try to make them more um, famous and uh, give them as much of exposure as I can just because I think they deserve it and I'm just the biggest fan of Indian niche perfumery and uh, I really enjoy artistic fragrances and so I don't really know about which brand to tell you about. Do you know Eskis Perfumes from Russia? They are amazing and have reviews dedicated to them. Do you know Strangers Perfumery from Thailand? Have many reviews dedicated to them. Do you know January Scent Project from America? Love them too. Like there are so many great fragrance brands that I could um, include into this category but I decided to go for the tiny Canadian niche house Malak or Malach Parfums that I discovered towards the end of last year and it is run by Matthew Malak who is such a talented perfumer and this is a really tiny brand that I want more people to be aware of and those guys from Canada uh, if you are looking for great perfumes I really recommend you to get uh, fragrances from him and check out his Instagram page because he shares lots of uh, perfume knowledge over there too and two perfumes that I currently own from him but I'm dying to get more are uh, Sivat Cat Cheaper and you get pheromones in a bottle there because this is an Imalic um, Shipper fragrance that I reviewed in a separate video and I love it and my recent uh, fragrance from him that I got is called Vienna 1900 and this perfume is a true mystery because it's a very rare case when fragrance uh, smells like a hole that you can't really define because in the majority of fragrances I identify certain notes and I can tell what I smell when in this fragrance it's impossible to describe it by the notes and stuff like that. It's a little bit sweet, it's not floral, in there is very chocolatey, refined, not earthy patchouli. It's just like perfume that is one of a kind with a bit of a retro vibe. All of his perfumes have that vintage um, vibe to them but not too much. They're still very modern. This perfume is just a real dream. I will even put a little bit on myself just because when I have it on I'm always wondering what smells so good because this is a real mystery, a real perfume and you guys if you are looking for a great blind buy you should definitely try out this particular fragrance because I literally swear by it and it is Tomalis approved and you know how much that means. Alright so the next category is hard the hype and uh, it's basically perfume that I agree the hype around you got it so I first wanted to include Baccarat Rouge on this list because you might know that I used to be a hater of that perfume and only fragrances that were inspired by Baccarat Rouge 540 changed my mind about the original one that started all the clones movement and the inspirations on that perfume and even though I'm still not the fan of the original one which um, smells to me like dentist bandages and candy floss which is such a strange combination it's just too harsh for me there are fragrances that are done um, in the in the way Baccarat Rouge is done for example the same perfumer who is behind Baccarat Rouge 540 
Francisco de Jong, if I'm not mispronouncing his name, please, sorry if I'm um, totally torturing it, but he also created Barbary Hair line, which smells like something more wearable than Baccarat Rouge, and the intense version is awesome. I bought it, I own it, it's fantastic, and I like it. So I first wanted to include Baccarat Rouge on this list, but then like I decided to go for Lira from Casamarati by Xerjov, and you know, guys, this is such an awesome vanilla scent that is really sweet but at the same time that lemony opening it's very very mouth-watering and every time I have this fragrance on I receive many compliments and so many people rave about this perfume and in my opinion for a good reason because it smells niche it smells expensive vanilla can smell cheap especially if it's a vanilla dominant fragrance which doesn't happen to Lyra and I like how creamy, I like how yes sugary, yes super sweet but at the same time refreshing it smells and it's an awesome perfume that even my boyfriend wears and loves and that doesn't happen often to perfumes which makes Lyra worth the hype. So the next category is um, or renounce the ounce and this is basically the overhyped perfume that I don't get the hype of and oh my god there are so many perfumes that are super overhyped and you know I've never blind bought overhyped perfumes if something is overhyped I just know it won't work for me and that uh, role works like 90% um, of the time and I can talk about um, that same Baccarat Rouge I really agree on the um, hype of Delina that's not worth it with the Moody Boo reviews. But I want to talk about Le Mal that so many men go crazy about and hype and just rave about and I just don't get it. Like I personally don't get it. I don't think it's not worth the hype, I just don't get the hype because that perfume to me smells way too plasticky, sweet and um, headachey. But that's just only my opinion. I don't understand the hype of that perfume and I don't understand the hype on the Black Orchid from Tom Ford. To me it literally smells like old lady scent and so many older ladies, elder ladies, mature ladies, I don't like the term old lady, but somehow it's still there in the perfumery. And even though many people consider Chanel number no. 5, I'm still here, I'm still here, um, just pulling out my Chanel number no. 5 perfumes. I don't think this is an old lady type of scent. Yes, it smells retro, yes, it smells vintage because it has been around for many years and normally um, mature ladies uh, gravitate towards it, but I, it's not an old lady purse type of scent, you know what I'm talking about? And Black Orchid just does smell old to me and it's kind of like sweet and strange. I actually own a perfume that uh, is very similar to it, but it doesn't smell old to me. Me, it has all the greatness of Black Orchid, but no heaviness. And it's uh, Dark Orchid by Amor Oud. This is a good fragrance. It's powdery, it's um, really reckless, and it's very similar to Black Orchid. And in case it didn't work for you, I really recommend you the one from Amor Oud. So yeah, with that being said, um, Let's move on to the next category. All right, you guys. Next one is called Love is Blind Buying. And that's basically the best blind buy I've ever made. And uh, I need to be honest with you, I don't really blind buy that much. Blind buying is surely super fun experience and just like um, anticipating a fragrance and like waiting for it and just picturing how it smells. Oh my god, like who of us hasn't done that? Let's be honest, everybody has at some point, but to be honest, I don't have that much money um, to waste on perfumes I might potentially not like, if that makes sense to you. So I try to always sample first, that's my role and I really recommend you to do that too. So I normally go to the store and try perfume first before buying it maybe not in the store but online or somewhere else. And if it's a perfume from a different country, from an indie brand that I can't find in the store, I order samples or sometimes I'm sent 
samples for free from brands um, that works differently but I always try to sample first because you know I don't like everything and normally I judge perfume by the notes I don't really watch fragrance reviews that much especially if something overhyped I'm not like okay I am buying it like I really trust the opinion of that person because I know how personal my taste is and I just don't trust everybody and there are only perfumers like DSH perfumes, uh, uh, Don Smith Hurts and Sarah McCartney from 4000 Hours Tuesdays um, whose um, skills I trust 100% and that's why my best blind buy is actually Biva from DSH perfumes and did you notice that this is the second time me mentioning her fragrances? That should mean something, right? So Biva was actually dedicated to Robert Herrmann from South Le Blanc. He was a contributor to that online perfume blog and he passed away but before before that he had an idea for Dawn to create perfume that would be inspired by Japanese pearls and this fragrance literally smells like you are pulling out um, pearlescent pearls from a clean river on a sunny afternoon and the weather is perfect, you are surrounded by nature and this is basically such a um, peaceful experience wearing this perfume that is really powdery and you know me I'm the biggest fan of powdery scents and the major note in here is rice powder and it is one of my most favorite powdery notes so who else could do the best rice powder perfume if not Don Spencer Herbert's right but there are also aldehydes and mint and something very creamy and ethereal in there so I love this perfume it was one of my recent uh, blind buy purchases I'm wearing it today and it's just awesome Applause to Dawn. Love you. Next perfume category is Crystal Baller and that's basically a fragrance that I'm anticipating the most and that's for me Rose Freak from Tom Ford that I'm getting next week. Finally it arrived in Frankfurt's Douglas store and hopefully by the time I go there it will be waiting for me and hopefully that won't be a flop, hopefully that won't be a miss, hopefully I will enjoy it because you know I have high hopes for it just simply because I like Tom Ford's rosy fragrances and um, despite the fact not many like the scent, I like the bottle and I'm getting that perfume, I've told myself that so yeah that's the one for this category. Let me know yours. I think that everybody could um, say something to this category. Love it. Basically what has just happened is, as I was editing this video, I noticed that I skipped one category, that's why I am back to talk about I take it rare category, and that's the moment when I need to mention one perfume that's rare and is hard to find, and that description applies to the majority of my fragrances, because in my collection each perfume tells its unique story, so I'm having hard times to pick just one perfume, because for example, do you know about Vona from Gerboam that is inspired by Ukrainian woman and this is honestly the muskiest white floral scent ever which is gorgeous and I love it. I don't know if many people own it but I'm sure that not a lot know about it and do you know and have Sakura by Mia Shinma which is the powderiest, creamiest scent of a cherry blossom. I totally adore it and this is a hidden gem just as Y06-S is in which we get the scent of overheated TV and bananas. So this gem from Blackbird is also not known to many and uh, I picked two other fragrances that are very rare in my personal opinion. If you own them and you have them, that's great, I would like to know that. But uh, Bint Al Franci from Abdul Karim Al Franci is an awesome Udi Violet scent that I actually requested because after I tried Gucci's Violet Oil, I got obsessed with the idea of Violet combined with Oud and all of his perfumes are extremely long-lasting because they are in this oily form you just dot it all over your body and you're good to go all day long you'll get the aroma of this very essential fresh violet oud and another one is wild child number 13 from opus oils and this is the most chocolatey patchouli scent you'll be able to find and it actually won a patchouli contest so yeah that makes it a great fragrance and i have so many unique perfumes listen do you know about rosamonda from jus this is the most 
modern juicy rose in a bottle and many people asked me about it so my review is coming soon but yeah that was my take on this category let's move on to the next one okay the next one is i'm stuck on a band eight and this is basically the fragrance i would create for my favorite actor or singer or band and you know what i first wanted to mention keanu reeves because you know i've been into him my whole life and i picture him as a very minimalistic guy, I don't even think that he wears perfume and I don't want to guess which type of fragrance he might like because I really want him to tell me what he likes as I'm giving him lots of stuff. So instead I decided to create perfume for one of my most favorite rock bands which is Red Hot Chili Peppers. And you guys, I have such a cool taste uh, in music and in perfumery and Red Hot Chili Peppers like oh my god love them love their music and they are from my favorite city LA that I've never been to but I am planning to go there soon and our fragrance would be called um, the City of Angels as in their song Under the Bridge if I'm not wrong and they have many uh, songs dedicated to California and uh, our fragrance should be spicy because they are red hot chili peppers, you know, something peppery, something spicy, so that would be a really bright opening. And then I want lots of animalic notes in there, I want it to be dirty, I want it to be rock and roll, but I want to put orange blossom in the heart, so that would be the skinkiest orange blossom scent ever, with some spicy twist all throughout it, and if I'm not wrong, orange blossom grows in California, so yeah, I think that would be an appropriate fragrance for that band. And the final category is called Brain Fart Stink 2. <laughs> Oh my god, like this is the example of a cool name for a perfume category, right? So this is basically my most uh, expensive uh, perfume purchase I regret. And you know what? I don't know what's wrong with me, but I have no major perfume purchase regrets in my collection. Maybe because I don't blind buy, maybe because I really think before buying perfumes. Of course, there are fragrances in there that I don't wear all that often and I could save, but I don't regret anything and that's kind of strange, what's wrong with me? But then I thought about it a bit longer and um, I figured out that I have perfumes that I don't necessarily need and these are from the House of Matriarch that I was obsessed with in the past and uh, we all know iconic um, Kazimi rose fragrance with lots of incense and spices to it and I was really interested in Siren which was created for somebody who liked Kazimi and in there should be Narcissus which is one of my favorite flowers and I've been looking for realistic uh, fragrance with um, the scent of Narcissus which is really hard to do because the Narcissus absolutely doesn't smell like the real flower, blah blah blah, long story short, I went ahead and blind bought it together with Albatross and both perfumes were passes for me because Albatross was quite a dry, any, um, not animal, like um, aquatic marine scent that doesn't work for me at all, I gave it to my boyfriend who doesn't wear it, it's just very masculine, not my thing at all, I was just really inspired by its story and Siren that I had high hopes for disappointed me because it smells like 90% uh, of Kazimi but less rosy and so I have uh, basically two identical fragrances but it's okay because you can't have too much of a good thing, right? All right guys, that completes my take on this perfume tag which was fun to do and I hope I made your day more enjoyable and I'm looking forward to hear from you. Your feedback on today's video would be highly appreciated. Maybe you can actually add something to these categories that um, would uh, make my day more enjoyable to read through your comments. That's my favorite activity. So go ahead, drop me a comment below. Of course, like this video. If you enjoyed watching, subscribe to my channel if you're new here, please. And ring that bell, that's very important. Otherwise, YouTube won't notify you about my new videos. And of course, I want to tag a few reviewers such as 
as Benjamin from the channel Santitar. I would really like to hear your picks. And Joe from the channel Joe sent me because he buys a lot of perfumes and many of them are super expensive. So I'm sure he has something to tell us. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to stay tuned, smell good, have an awesome weekend. And if you have any requests for future chatty videos or an idea what we can talk about in my live stream that is coming in the end of the month, please let me know that too. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see each other next one really soon. Bye, guys. Mm-hmm.